Good evening, and I hope this is going live. Um, anyway, tonight's topic is about time, and the reason I thought of that topic is uh, we were in the book of Galatians talking about freedom and equality. Galatians chapter 4, uh, verse 1, Paul writes, What I'm saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also when we are under age, we were in slavery under the elemental forces of the world. But when the time set had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. And so Paul talks about um, time, that, that once upon a time, we were under guardianship until a time set by the Father or God. And then in verse 4, which is the key verse, is, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son. And I wanted to discuss time because, you know, since Einstein, today we live with time as relative. And we used to uh, think of time uh, differently years ago. I recently read an article about the history of time. And the way we look at time today is completely different than how people looked at time a hundred years ago, definitely uh, different from the time when Jesus was alive. Um, and so we, we look at time now and we measure time very precise. As a matter of fact, we, we measure time in the thousandth of a second, um, especially in the Olympics. And I'll read a poem later on concerning this about the value of time. Um, but there is a time, and time is indeed relative. And I titled today's topic, Time, um, and that the only time we really have is now. A lot of people, unfortunately, uh, live in the past and uh, let the past influence them rather than live in the present. Or some people live in the future, um, you know, what I'll do when. And the reality is the only time we have now, and I want for us to, and I know all of us are older, to think of time as a hourglass. And I hope y'all can see this picture, um, that hourglass that have sand in the top and time, uh, sand falls through. And that's one of the time how they used to tell time. And uh, the reason I bring this up is, um, the time in the top of this glass represents the future. The time on the bottom of the glass represents the past. But the only time we really have is right there in the middle where it is falling through, and that's now. And I bring this up because none of us know how much time we have. I remember when I was in high school, there were two root that I knew. One was Ruth Buchanan, and she was uh, 72 years old when I met her. And then there was uh, Ruth Ann Baker, and she was in high school, uh, two grades above me. And uh, I find it very interesting that both of them, uh, name was Ruth. And um, to, to show the difference in time, if you had asked, you know, here is Ruth Buchanan, 72 years old, how much time did she have? And we would probably say not much, you know, she's 70s. Um, but in reality, Ruth Buchanan lived for another 34 years and died at 104. Um, whereas Ruth Ann Baker died that month in a car crash, uh, 18 years old, um, a drunk, ran across the line and crashed into her. And I bring that up because the reality is um, time is one of those things that is the most valuable thing we have. And none of us know how much time we have because what happened is this part, the future is covered up and the past is the past. What the time we have lived 
we can't get back. Uh, the only time we really have is the time right now, the time that is going through the, from the future to the past now. And I bring that up because the scripture made it quite clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. And I want to read that. It says, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I help you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. And what Paul is trying to communicate to the Corinthian church and to us in reality, that the only time we have is now. And, um, you know, a lot of us, like I said, some of us live in the past. Some of us live in the future, you know, squirreling away um, things and uh, living, you know, one day in the future. I know I used to, to, to be on both extremes. Once upon a time, I used to live in the past and um, things that happened or people that hurt me, I would carry around the baggage of that. You're thinking of one day when I get older, uh, what I'm planning to do and what I'll do. And, you know, uh, and I realized that the only time I have is now and that the Bible does say now is the time of salvation. The only time that we have is now. And um, so I, I turn to Ecclesiastes chapter three, which talks about time. And um, I'm, I'm going to read that verse one through nine. It says, there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers or humanity gain from their toil? their time. As I often use that particular verse in funerals, we are reminded that all of us just have so much time. Um, as I mentioned, I knew two Ruth when I was a teenager. Ruth, she, she was in her 70s. And if you ask the question how much time she had, most of us would say not much. But as I said, she lived for another 30 something years to 104. And then there was this wonderful young lady, 18 years old, senior in high school. And her time, if you ask how much time does she have, you would say quite a bit. But in reality, she died less than a week later in a car crash. We never know how much time we have. And Unfortunately, too many of us live in the past or too many of us live in the future. And the reality is the only time we have is now. I especially the, the part, especially with coronavirus 19, that there's a time to embrace and time to refrain from embracing. And because of all this social distancing and stuff, you know, there are times that we have to kind of keep apart. And, and as a church, we can't be meeting right now. And this is a time that we, you know, refrain from embracing. I know as a church, a lot of people keep asking, Pastor, when can we get back together and socialize? Well, there is a time for socializing and there's a time for us to refrain from that kind of activity. And so time is a very valuable thing. And I think that time is more valuable than money. As a matter of fact, here's the thing. Each and every one of us have the same amount of time each and every day. There's 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, or 86,400 seconds. And each and every one of us is given the same amount of time every day. No one has more time than anybody else. 
So why do certain people accomplish more and some people get rich in the amount of time we have? And here's the thing. There's a time to keep, as the Bible say, and there's a time to throw away. Unfortunately, too many people waste time. I served for 26 years in the prison system. And if you talk to those inmates, they are serving time. And they will tell you that time is the most valuable commodity they have. It's time. And far too often we forget that. Um, the richest person, once they die and have no more time, will tell you that time is indeed more valuable than money. And let's let's talk about this for a second. Um, nobody on their deathbed will ever say, I wish I spent more time at work earning that extra buck. Most people said, I wish I spent more time with my friends, my loved ones, my family. Unfortunately, too many people try to waste time chasing after the wrong things in life. And so what I want to do is to talk about time from an experiential viewpoint and talk about time in two different ways. Because um, you see, in the Greeks had two different words for time. Uh, one was chronos, which was chronological time. And let's be realistic. Uh, none of us can turn back the clock. I know I have seen a Sabrina where they train and went back in time and um, so how many of us wish we could do that go back, change things that we have done in the past I know uh, that is a fantasy um, there are there was a time I used to have these fantasies I wish I could go back in time and and change the past but I realized that everything that happened to us in chronological time it happened we just need to accept it and move on and the reality is, I finally grew up and realized that I would not want to change anything that has happened to me. I knew when I was a teenager, for example, I, I always had these crazy ideas. I uh, asked my mother once, um, you know, um, why have eight kids? Um, you know, um, there, that's too many. And um, I realized that I would not exist if I did not have five older brothers and an older sister, uh, because the chronological time of my mother and my father meeting and having me, uh, time is so valuable that, you know, uh, let's be realistic, biologically, uh, a, a woman is, or female are born with all their eggs, at least one a month. And if she had released those one a month and did not have nine months, six, six times before, the egg that made me would not be there at the time that I was made. And so I, I think that, you know, hey, uh, I thank God now that I have five older brothers and an older sister and uh, because of timing, because timing is very important. And I realized that timing is very important, especially in my life. Um, the fact that I was born or you were born, it was a matter of timing. Um, and I, I stop and think about my life. I, I met Rosalie, uh, and she was, had just graduated from seminary and, and was doing a doctoral studies. And I had just arrived at seminary. And if I had met her the year before and asked her out or tried to date her or do anything, she would have said, no, if I had met her the year later, the been gone. And so timing is so important um, that um, sometimes we don't realize that things happen in our lives and we don't realize how important they are. And now I look back on my life and I say, I met her at the right time because if I'd met her before um, the year that I met her, um, she wasn't going to be, she wasn't ready for marriage. She wasn't ready for a lot of things, and uh, I met her at the right time. And that's what um, Paul is talking about. But when the time set by God had come, God sent his son. And one of the things I want for us to realize is that, uh, yes, we live in chronological time. We can't change the clock backwards. But uh, God is 
perfect. Um, it is so perfect that um, we are who we are based upon um, timing. Um, and so uh, since we only have now, we can't change the past, uh, we should make the best use of now. Um, I also thought about time in uh, other ways. I mentioned inmates who think that time is so valuable and I realized that we all have the same amount of time and on their deathbed would say, you know, I wish I spent more time at work earning that extra buck. They wish they spent more time with friends and family. But um, here's the thing, uh, you could always earn more once you spend your time, that's it. You can't get any more back. As I mentioned, uh, none of us know when we're going to, how long we're going to live or when we're going to die. But uh, the time we have, um, it's more valuable than money. You could steal my money and I can replace it. But if you steal my time, I can't replace it. It's gone forever. Once it's gone, it's gone. And um, so whenever someone spend any time with you, uh, they're giving you value more than you realize. And so many us, unfortunately, waste too much time. I think about the time that I wasted, which I wish I had back spending time with my kids, my wife. Uh, my wife was very fortunate. She homeschooled and spent a lot of time with um, our daughters. And as a matter of even today, um, you know, they will talk to each other. Um, throughout the day, they will text each other. They, every night, they call and talk to each other. And part of the reason is I, I found out a secret about life. Kids spell, spell love, T-I-M-E, time. And uh, I think of, uh, of the lost time that I wasted. Um, and so we need to remember that spending time with friends and loved ones, especially right now, you know, uh, for those of y'all who uh, wish you could be spending time with your mother or your grandkids or with the people you love, but because of this virus, you can't spend that time with them um, to spend time in church. You know, there are so many things that we, we realize that um, we, we aren't getting because we don't have the time to spend with each other. And so I do agree that uh, kids spell time, uh, love. Not L-O-V-E, but time, T-I-M-E, the time you spend with them, talking with them, helping them. Um, and, and, you know, so that's one of those things that we have to, to be uh, aware of, that time is indeed more valuable than money. Far too often I was too busy uh, off at work, working and earning the dollar rather than spending time at home. Uh, somebody recently asked me, um, am I happy with my retirement? And I said, yes, I'm earning less money, but I found something far more in the quality of life and more time for the important things in life. And, and that's what um, I want to talk about tonight is that time is far more valuable than money. And spending time with the ones you love is far more important than anything else. Um, you know, each and every one of us, as I mentioned, is given 24 hours a day. Than 40 minutes. And the question is, how do we spend it? Who do we spend it with? What do we spend doing with our time? Uh, do we waste it or do we invest it um, in people and in ourselves? Uh, I spend quite a bit of time studying and reading and learning. Um, and I realize that, um, you know, those time is very valuable and uh, and I advise you all, especially during these times where we can't get together physically and embrace and we can't spend time together, um, you know, doing things that we realize how valuable time is. Uh, I, I want to read a poem concerning that the value of time. Uh, this is by an, an, an anonymous author. It says, to realize the value of one year, ask a student who failed a grade. To realize that one month, ask a mother who gave a premature baby. To realize the value of a week, ask the editor of a weekly newspaper. To realize the value of a day, ask the person who was born on February 29th. To realize the value of an hour, ask the lover 
minutes who are waiting to meet. To realize the value of a minute, ask the person who missed the train. To realize the value of a second, ask a person who just avoided an accident. To realize the value of a millisecond, ask the person who won a silver medal in the Olympics. Treasure every moment that you have and treasure it more because you shared it with someone special enough to spend your time. And remember that time waits for no one. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it is called the present friends are a very rare joy. You smile and encourage you to succeed. They lend an ear. They share a word of praise. And they always want to open up their hearts to us. It's how much you care. Spend some time with them. Spend some time with those who are valuable to you. I know this Sunday for me, um, because of this virus, some people won't be able to spend time with their mother. Um, they're, they're, you know, I, I think of no one more important to um, anybody than a person who gave you nine months of free room and board. Um, you know, I mean, they sacrifice greatly. Um, and so, as I mentioned, uh, I, I, as a kid, I had all these crazy fantasies. And I really like, yes, time is very valuable. It's more valuable to me now than money. And I hope and pray you can see that there's a particular point in time that is more important. Um, the only time we really have is now, and we should take advantage of now. Yesterday is indeed history. It's past. There's nothing we can do about it. Tomorrow, nobody has promised it. Uh, as I mentioned, there are two roots. Uh, one was in her 70s, lived to 104. The one was 18 and died as an 18-year-old kid. Um, the only time we have is now. Um, we should really make this use of it and um, make sure that we realize that, um, you know, on our deathbed, um, looking back over our lives, are we going to say, did I spend my time well or did I spend my time chasing after the wrong things? Um, did I spend my time um, doing good or did I waste it? I saw too many people in my ministry at the prison. Um, just doing time. Unfortunately, um, you know, there was nothing they could do. Uh, they were in prison. And I kept encouraging them, rather than doing time, why don't you make use of the time you have where you are separated from your family to study, to read, to get an education, to better yourself, so that when you do go back into society, you, you will see how valuable time is and and how important people really are, and uh, to to make sure that you don't do something in the past. Um, as I mentioned, there is a time for everything. Right now we are uh, right now we um, can't meet, but um, we should make good use of the time. Um, you know, some people don't realize how valuable it is. Each and every day is precious. Each and every day is a gift from God. We don't know how long we are going to live. And um, the time that we have, um, tell somebody that you care. Um, your love, grandkids, um, reach other people because people right now are, are, are suffering and are hurting. The best thing you can give them is some precious time. I know um, a lot of people don't realize how important, you know, giving money is one thing, but giving your time to me is far more valuable. And um, I'll end with that. If there's any questions concerning time, um, I do believe that God's timing is perfect and that, that God at the right time in the history sent his son. And that now is indeed the only time we have and the time that we should uh, take advantage 
of the opportunities that we have. Uh, I see several of y'all have said how true it is when you get older, you realize the value of time more. Uh, great message. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, take, type it in. Um, but again, um, you know, to me, I, 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 I the most valuable thing to me and and pray that as we spend these days, this time separated from it's how valuable it is. As the Bible said, it is good to spend some time in the house of the Lord. Right now, we can't do that, but it is indeed good to be able to use the technology and spend some time with you tonight. Um, I hope that you realize the value of time and um, Whatever time we have left on this earth, that we will thank God for it and wisely. We are given the same amount each and every 12 hours, 1,440 minutes. The question is, who are you spending your time with? What are you doing with your time? Again, um, if you have any, any questions uh, or not, I will love. Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, remember, if your mother is alive, call them, Facebook time them, uh, do whatever you need to, send them some flowers. Um, if you are a mother, kids will call. And I, I know I don't have a mother anymore. How I wish that I could have some time with her. Just, I love her. That I will end and I'll see y'all on Sunday. Blessing.